welcome back to Crafty Meraki's YouTube channel. My name is Aditi and today I am back with some inspiration for you all using the Meraki Artisan Flora Lily dies and I am going to be creating some cute gift tags. So here's a look at the die set that I'm using, the Lily die set and I have previously in other videos showed how to layer the die cut pieces so i've just skipped that i will definitely link the video on top as well as in the description box below just in case you want to see how these flowers are put together however i am just going to take you through the set itself so it comes with one single piece which helps cut all the layers for the bigger lily and i absolutely love the fact that each die cut piece in itself gives us all the necessary pieces we need to put that particular flower together so one shot die cutting no fuss and makes life easy so i have already glued the layers i have cut all my pieces on white cardstock nina smooth because i am going to show you how i color these with alcohol markers so for that reason i have already assembled all the pieces and that's another technique that i just want to share I love ink blending, I love using colored cardstock and equally I love using my coloring mediums. So for this technique, I think this is something that you can do where at a stretch you die cut all the flowers and the layers, assemble them and then you know when you're just say relaxing, unwinding, probably watching television or doing something else but want to color, just grab your artist markers and start coloring these elements and then put them together on a card or any other project at a later date. The instructions for layering all of these elements is right within the package. So it's very easy to follow. There is uh, no room for error or doubt there. And it comes with three leaves. So I have those leaves right here. It comes with the smaller um, kind of flowering bud. And again, I have assembled all the pieces to put that together. And then it comes with these two particular buds in itself, which add so much to the composition. So I'm just going to quickly show you on the back of the packaging. It gives you two ideas for composition using the elements that you've die cut. And of course, then be creative and use it in any way that you like. This was a card that I had earlier created using the same set and I had used alcohol markers and this was an Instagram reel. It became so popular that everybody asked me to show how I colored these elements. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Show you how I colored these effortlessly, quickly using my artist markers for this stunning result. So I am using Artistry by Alch New Markers. This is the English Country Garden set. And I'll tell you in a while the colors that I'm using. But for my greens, I am using the Sunshine Valley Garden set. So from the English Country, I have Mango Smoothie for my yellow. I have Peach Perfect, Rouge and Velvet for my pinks. I also have blush out here for a lighter tone just in case I need that. And like I mentioned from the Sunshine Valley set, I have pulled out Citrus Burst for the yellow for my leaves and foliage. I have Firefly, Grass Fields and Shadow Creek, the three greens that I'd like to use to color the images. So I am going to start with my foliage here. I'll set the flowers aside and I'll zoom in a bit. I'm also going to bring out my sticky mat just so that these elements can stay adhered and I don't have any problems trying to hold them down simply because I am coloring on elements that are, that are already die cut. Now if you don't have a sticky mat and you are wondering what you could do i would suggest laying your die cuts in the negative piece so for instance right here 
just lay back your die cut elements within the negative space and then use some washi tape to hold it down to your work surface that way you will not struggle holding these elements down when you have to color right this video i am keeping it in real time because i really want you to see the coloring process and enjoy that and um, that's the reason why i have filmed this slightly differently instead of adding a voiceover later on so let's zoom in and quickly start with the coloring process now i have used yellow as a common color between my flowers and my leaves the yellow instantly brings in the light color that I need for my highlights. And so for the leaves, I am using citrus burst for that reason. So I'm going to start with yellow. And this is something very fast. I am not spending too much time. And I call this stroke work to color it. So I'm going to use the brush tip, not the fine bullet tip. And what I'm going to do is start adding yellow to the leaves very randomly just to bring in my highlights, especially in that center veining of the leaves. So that way I have a lighter color and a highlight. And just like that, I'm going to lay out color. I'm leaving white spaces intentionally. So I'm just going to go over that again from the bottom upwards one stroke from the top downwards one stroke and just making sure I have enough yellow there. I am going to do the same thing for these buds as well. Bring in my yellow from the bottom upwards from the top downwards just random strokes without any thinking without any thought process of why I'm putting what I'm putting where. Just that the top portion is slightly light. So I want to maintain that lighter compared to my bottom portion where there are double layers to add that shading. So just like that, I have laid out citrus burst on all of these elements and I can set this aside now. Next, I'm going in with my lightest green, which is Firefly. And again, focusing on the areas where I need the light or the highlight, I am going to go in with the green at the center and then just add the strokes from the bottom upwards just to add the lighter green as a shade. And when it mixes with yellow, it's creating another blend right there which adds to the beauty. Again, leave white spaces because that also adds to the natural highlight look. So coming back to these buds, just in the center, I'm going to add a few strokes of the green from the top, from the bottom, making sure they look organic, just like that. So right here, where I want it to be lighter. Again, this piece. And then on the bud, from the top downwards, just adding a few strokes. And that's about it. Next, I'm going to go in with my second green. In this case, that's grass fields and add the darker color where I now need it. So I'm going to add strokes of the darker color, making sure I have enough light left. Again, from the bottom upward, just adding strokes from the tip downwards, adding strokes just like that. You can still see the yellow, the previous lighter green and now this darker green. Same way from the bottom upwards, from the top downwards, just a few brush strokes. And that's the reason why I call this to be a faster process. So one brush stroke and it's done. Again, same way from the top, I am going to add it right there as well. I will go back in and color the spaces where, you know, I have overlays of the die cuts, but first, it's all about adding our strokes. So again, from the bottom, just like that, from the top, bottom, from the top and bottom. So I've laid out that next green. And then I'm going to go in with the darkest green shadow creek and add a darker color only where I really need it. So just the tip and the bottom slightly, not too much, 
because I don't want this to be too dark. So I've extended that downwards to bring in that shading. Same way here, just like that. And let all of that sit and blend through. Again, from the tip, from the base, I'm going to bring in a darker color now. Here, where there's an overlap, I have this piece right on top and that piece at the bottom. So just there, I'm making sure to go a little deeper to bring in that depth and darker color. That's about it. Same way here on this leaf, at the bottom where it meets, I'm just bringing in my darker color. And I can always rotate, like just rotate so I can see this much more clearly because I want the inner edge darker. So just like that. I've brought in my darker colors and left the top slight. And now I can go back in. So I'm going to go back in with Citrus Burst. And right here, fill that up slightly to bring in that highlight that I had it earlier. Just kind of re-establishing um, it at places. Slight brush strokes. And that's about it. And then I will also go back in with my lightest green, Firefly. Again, just to complement and add the light that I needed. Again, filling gaps wherever I feel like there is white and I don't want that. Just like that. And this is the organic look. It looks so beautiful and stunning because this looks natural. And you see, that's as much time as I took to color all these foliage elements. So now that this is done, I am going to quickly pick all of these elements, set them aside and get to coloring the flower. This is the fastest way of coloring elements. I don't think it can get any faster than this. So now I'm going to come back to my flowers and I will first color this smaller one. So the stem is the same way. So let's just finish that and get that out of the way. So it's citrus burst, just adding random yellow on the stem. Going in with the first green, the lighter green, firefly in my case. Adding that. And I am going to then go in with the second green to darken, especially the tips right here where it meets the flower. That's where it needs to be darker. Go in with my darkest green at the bottom and at the tips, just making sure it's dark, pulling it out. I can then go back in with Citrus Burst to bring back that yellow in the center and that is done. Now for the flower. So I am using mango smoothie for the yellow of the flower. What I'm going to do is lay out yellow from the base of my petals outwards. So right here from the base right underneath this stem, I'm going to bring in the mango smoothie. First, I'm just adding smaller strokes and covering that inner region there simply because it's a little delicate and I want to get my yellow down there in place first. Once I have the yellow right there, I can then go back and extend the strokes. I am going to ensure that the center, which denotes the fold of the petal, I am not going to add any color there. That is what is going to give me my natural highlights again. So I'm going to do the same flicking motion, the stroke motion from the base outwards. Some strokes bigger, some strokes smaller. So basically laying out the mango smoothie till half of my petal. Right? Again, here from the top, just smaller strokes of mango smoothie. And I'm leaving that middle space white. Now here, this is the back of the petal, so I'm going to quickly color in mango smoothie there and I'm going to rotate just so I can show you better. Right from underneath, again, adding smaller strokes of the mango smoothie there, the yellow. Then I rotate 
to come back to this petal. So I'm going to add the yellow there again, strokes from the base extending outwards, just adding a little bit of that yellow right there, just that much. Then I rotate. I keep rotating so that my pen can move in the direction of the petal and it's easy for me. So I am going to just again add strokes from the base, pulling them outwards, flicking and leaving the stroke somewhere half midway of the petal basically. So same way I'm going to do that right here, a little bit from the tip, just a little. Even here, I'm going to add touches of the yellow from the tip inwards. Next, I'm going in with Peach Perfect, which brings in that peachish tone that we need just to blend the pink with the yellow. And since this is an, this is like the back of the petal, these two, so I'm going to add more of the peach from the tip inwards for this. So I'm just doing the same stroke work from the tip creating strokes that meet my yellow right there. Same way here, I'm going to do that, making sure they meet my tip right there. And I'm going to add the peach to all the petals that way, just from the tip going inwards, meeting the yellow. Again, simple brush strokes. So once that's done, I'm going to go in with my rouge, which is just a brighter pink. And I'm going to add that to these petals where I see the inside rather than these two where I see the back. So I'm going to add that just to extend it slightly, bring in that pink tone. Instead of the rouge, I'm going to go in with cotton candy actually because that was still a peachy tone. And I want a pink tone right there. So I am going to add that, bringing in my pink. So same way from the tip inwards, just short strokes in that stroke motion. Right here, I'm just going to add a little bit to give it that depth. And just little touches right there to intensify that orange, peach rather. And I am then going to use the velvet and bring in the darker with short strokes, just tip inwards. So that way I am highlighting and adding the shading and the shadows, creating strokes for my flower. I'm going to go back in with cotton candy, the pink, just right here to add touches of the pink, just slightly like so. So with that, this is complete and we can move to the main big flower and keep this right here and you will see me rotate quite a bit just depending on the petal I am colored. Again starting with the mango smoothie now from the insides so I'll start with one particular petal making sure I color the inside underneath this stamen adding the mango smoothie right there. So once I've added the color right there I'm going to now start stretching it slightly outwards in stroke motion. Not too big. I'm not actually going completely halfway across. But I am making sure that I stretch it out and have a few strokes of the mango smoothie. So I'm going to do that to all the petals again. Making sure I leave that middle line which denotes the fold of the petal untouched and white. So again just filling the gap right here. Adding strokes with my yellow. Just like that. Leaving the center. 
and I'll complete adding. So I keep rotating my sticky mat just so that it's easy for me to add color in the direction of the petals. So again on this petal, just extending the strokes outward from the base of the petal. Some places I'm dragging them to make them bigger. Some places I'm making sure that they are smaller because this is a bigger flower. So there's scope for more coloring here, more blending. And just keeping that in mind, I keep rotating and adding strokes with the yellow. And say, for instance, I've added strokes. I'm just going back filling that inner edge just in case I have white spaces or missed adding something. Now with this petal this is again in the front so that's the direction I'm going to follow. I will add yellow this way outwards creating nice movement with it. And that's the whole idea of the stroke work that you're denoting the movement of the petal or the shape of the petal based on the direction of your stroke. So I did that. Now when I turn it, you can see that this petal curls that way. And that's the reason why it helps me with my stroke work. So the last petal, I'm going to go in and add the yellow strokes. And once that's done, I am going to now move to cotton candy pink, not the blush which is very light for this flower. From the tip of the petal inwards, I'll start adding the pink. I'm not meeting with the yellow yet. I'm stopping right where the yellow ends. Just on the edges, I'm making sure I extend it into the yellow just that much so right here there's too much of a gap so i'm just going to go in and add the strokes leaving some white spaces and same way right here i am going to come in with my cotton pan candy uh, pink strokes again matching the fold of the petal the movement of the petal extending it inwards keeping the center plain just bringing in that pink tone from the tip of the petal inwards just like that so it is quite a fast process i'm not deliberately slowing down i'm moving this very fast that's the fast movement just so that i don't have too much ink or i'm not going to overthink it so just like that strokes flicks basically that flicking motion and I am adding my pink now to this petal. Some places I want to extend it. Some places I want to make sure that there is a lot more white. Again just following the curve of the petal, the fold of the petal that's what's most important. So right here, I'm going to bring it inwards, curve it right there to match the movement, same way. So it is light touch, my brush is barely touching the paper. I will quickly show you on a scrap piece of paper. I am not pressing too hard in doing that. If I do that, it's flat ends on both the ends. I'm barely touching the nib to the paper and then just fast streaks, just like that. So once I have the pink down in place, now I'm going to go in with the peach perfect to blend and bring the yellow and the pink together. So again, just starting on this petal where I 
first finished i'm going to bring in the peach perfect from the base of the yellow and extend it into the pink just like that and the white space that i've left i'm going to bring in a little peach perfect there too just that so that way i am darkening my yellow at the base but also extending it outwards into the pink to blend the two together just like so so at the fold bringing in a little bit of the peach perfect there same way right here making sure it blends with my pink and flipping it rotating it and just adding nice streaks and just the fold where i've left the white space i am going back in with peach perfect and highlighting that to bring in that tone so on to my last petal here i'm going to repeat that and then with the rouge i'm just going to color in the outer portion of the stamen and i will add peach perfect onto it to make it a little more peachy and orangey and i will use crimson from the same marker set to add color to these tiny stamen pieces and then i'm going to add my darker color which is velvet but first i'm going to add a little crimson to this flower over the pink just tip inwards just like that before i add the velvet so i'm adding another shade of the pink bringing that in so that my darker color doesn't look too stark and out of place on the petal so just following the petals and the folds light strokes nearly at the tip of my petals just like that not touching my center line at all adding a few strokes so that when i add the darker color it is all going to blend in and look smooth just that much and then i can go in with my darkest color which is velvet and add the dark again tiny short strokes to denote that shading and some places i'm just extending it out into the yellow for that natural look of the petal just like that and that is what adds so much more value to this flower so i'm going to do that to all the petals bring in that darker tone and flicks for a natural movement and flow on to the next petal and just extending it slightly at the edges i'll complete this petal right here and on to this one adding the darker shading and the method has remained constant it's just flicks and stroke work building color over color and just retaining our highlight and bringing in this depth and shadow with the dark color and that is a beautifully colored flower now even before i begin to do anything else about creating a tag what i'm going to do on these elements is splatter some white acrylic ink because that just adds more cohesiveness and unity to these elements so i always love adding splatter to my projects 
So just going ahead and you can already see the white splatter further blends and unifies all the colors that we have added using our coloring and shading and you know the highlights and everything. Now I'm going to set this aside to just dry naturally because I need to work on the base of my tags. So I'm going to put this aside right here and bring out my paper trimmer and I will trim out two tags. So I am going to do, let's see, two, I will actually cut at three inches and then add four or four and a half. That's a nice size. And I am going to use my paper trimmer to set that diagonally on one side to cut a little triangle there. So I'm going to align this one edge to say one three quarters. Trim that and I will use the same piece. So I've cut that to realign and just use my scissors to snap that off. So I just like to place that right there and snap it off with my scissors so I have the tag ends. So I have my two tags right here and I've just punched holes and put an eyelet. And next what I want to do is I'm going to use the shape shifter stencil and add a little stencil accent using Sunkist, which is a light peach tone just slightly to bring in a little texture on my background so just aligning it over one stencil i'm going to softly blend and i'm not covering the entire parameter of my tag i'm going to just do it at places and fade it off so that i have a lighter variation and a darker variation so just like that slight accents and texture so setting my stencil aside, I am going to leave the tags right here on my sticky mat and first start working on a composition. I'm just playing with the elements, placing two of the smaller flowers on one tag, one big flower on the other tag and then trying to align the leaves around the flowers and I also like to just snip some of the leaves, trim them and use both the ends to tuck underneath the flowers just to create a little more variation in terms of the length of the leaves. So I'm using the leaves to anchor the flowers and once I have the leaves down in place I am adhering the flower with some foam tape and on the other tag I'm repeating the same thing using the buds for a sense of movement and as I was placing these I thought of making this into a lily bouquet because that's the sense that I was getting for this second tag. So I have used foam tape just underneath the flowers, not for the buds and I'm using the leaves right on top to cover that and mimic a look of a nice bouquet right there. Now for the sentiment. So I have pulled out just a note and hello stamp set to directly stamp a sentiment. So I'm going to check what I want to add. So I'm using just the Just a Note stamp set. Stamping thanks on the bouquet tag that right there the on the corner the and that looks good. And I'm going to use Thinking of You but stagger it. So first I'm just stamping Thinking and I am then going to just place off you on my acrylic block and lift ink just on that part of the sentiment and stamp that right underneath thinking just so that I have that sentiment in two lines instead of one long line. I am then adding black acrylic splatter predominantly on the background and using my bling buddy which is such a cool funky tool to add some sequins onto these tags for a little bling and final embellishment. The bling buddy is really handy it really helps pick those sequins and place them 
and no more struggling when placing embellishment so i'm really happy with that i'm placing just three sequins around the sentiment to connect that with my floral composition creating that triangle so that the ties are complete i've just added a little ribbon and that is a closer look with our colored lilies being our focal and that little ink blending i think just adds so much more texture and interest clean and simple tags if i can say were just highlighted very well with the coloring technique so i really hope that this tutorial has been helpful and that you give this coloring technique a try yourself do let me know if you enjoy these kind of real time videos so then i will make more of such videos and until the next time take care and bye bye